So, I have a little bit of a confession to make. It's a little bit, it's a little bit embarrassing. I've been building out my prompts for this video for a while. And here's why. Every now and then I'll think of or trial or test a different TikTok growth strategy or tactic or hack. And I'll write it down in this little notebook <laughs> in preparation for this video. And I've gotten to the point now where I feel like I've got a good selection of hacks for you guys to use if you are trying to grow on TikTok. Now, I've only been on TikTok for like months, do not get me wrong. However, I have experienced some mild success, but more importantly than that, my clients have experienced success. In fact, I helped my client over here go from four followers to 20,000 in just five weeks. So I'm the right person to help you with your TikTok growth strategy. Bear with me, I'm about to share with you my favorite growth hacks. Let's get to it. By the way, because I always forget to do this bit, hi, I'm Jade, I realize I've not introduced myself. Um, if you're new here and you like this type of content, I release content like this every single week, so be sure to hit subscribe. Okay, let's get to it. The first hack is a super controversial one. I'm just gonna, right out the gate, I'm just gonna start with something that I know people are not going to like. So, the first hack is to avoid trends. What? I know. I said it, I said you should avoid TikTok trends. Here's why. TikTok trends used to be a very strong way for you to grow your TikTok account, right? And if you don't know what I mean by this, it's when there is a trending audio challenge, dance, something that is going around consistently across TikTok and people are incorporating it into their own style or their own niche. And whilst that is still something you should do if you find a trend that you genuinely like, oh my God, do it, right? Because everything's not always about growth. Sometimes it's just about enjoyment. However, there have been some changes to TikTok and also just the digital online space recently, which have suggested that trend hopping is no longer the best way for you to grow on TikTok and it won't be the best way for you to grow on TikTok in the future. This is why. Research have recently shown that Gen Z, amongst other generations, are actually using TikTok as a search engine. And they're using it as a search engine to the extent where they will ignore Google. They'll be like, Google, hun, you don't have what I need. And they will instead use TikTok to find information and find content. So they are literally choosing TikTok over Google. Why does this matter? Well, if TikTok is going to start being used as a search engine, the creators who have a bank of content or credibility amongst specific themes or niches are going to be the ones who will grow the quickest in the future. Because if someone's using TikTok as a search engine, they are going to search in keywords in relation to whatever content they're looking for. So let's take my niche, for example. If someone's looking for some content creator tips, they're going to head to TikTok and type in the words content creator tips. The creators who are going to appear under that will be the ones who have built up some kind of authority, credibility, a decent content bank related to content creator tips. So they're the ones who are going to appear and they're the ones who are going to benefit from being positioned in front of a warm audience of people who are looking for creators who talk about content creator tips. Okay, so TikTok is changing, the digital landscape is changing. You heard it here first, maybe, I don't know, you might have heard it elsewhere. But regardless, it is changing. And with that, we need to adapt our growth tactics. So that is why my first hack is to actually focus on building up some credibility through content amongst a few specific niches. I'm not telling you to niche down, I'm not saying that you can't ever talk about anything else, but I really do recommend that you select a few different things that you want to consistently talk about and ensure that you have a decent bank of content about those things. The next hack is to stop ignoring your covers on TikTok. I get why people ignore them, I really do. It's one of the things about TikTok that people love is the fact that we don't need to lose sleep over whether or not our covers for our TikToks are aesthetic, right? The same way that we might do on other platforms like Instagram. I totally get the appeal of just being like, I can just post whatever I want, post it straight away and not worry about what the cover is. Whilst the covers are not going to be the be all and end all of the success of your platform, it is important to note that they still have a role to play. So let's do an example, right? Let's say I'm scrolling as an audience, as a user on TikTok, and I find a creator who I just find absolutely hilarious, right? So as a result of that, I click on that creator's profile because I wanna see more of their content. If I'm faced with a sea of content and there are no covers which do a good job at explaining or hinting as to what each TikTok is about, I'm probably not going to binge your content, right? Because if I'm just seeing a bunch of videos which look exactly the same, 
How do I even know which one I want to look at? The difference here is that if they've spent two seconds on their covers, I'm not saying to just create something super fancy, two seconds ensuring that the cover either has some text on it, which explains what your TikTok is about, or you've selected a frame of your TikTok, which does a good job at hinting as to what your TikTok is about. So if your TikTok is about a trip to the shops or something, you've selected the frame where you do something funny whilst you're at the shop. Therefore, people are more likely to click on it and they have a better idea as to what that TikTok is about. If you spend the time doing that, you will notice that people will be able to binge watch your content. They will click on different videos based on the title and the cover, and they will browse all of your content. This is a very high value thing for your audience to do. If your audience binge watches a few of your videos at one time, you are increasing the likelihood of them remembering you and engaging with your content again in the future, which is a difficult thing to achieve on TikTok because people see so much content from so many different creators that actually just because they followed you doesn't mean that they're going to remember you as harsh as that sounds so harsh but it's so true what you'll find though is that if they've gone onto your profile and they've binge watched a bunch of your content they're far more likely to actually remember you and that's what's going to help you create a deeper bond with your audience which is notoriously difficult for you to do on a platform like tiktok okay my next hack god all of these are a bit like are they controversial i don't know they're just different. You know, I like to come up with like different tips and tricks and stuff like that. This one is, might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. So the tip is to share something controversial. Now, there's a few caveats that I need to just make completely clear here. I'm not saying to create a controversial piece of content for the sake of it. I'm not saying to create a piece of content that is designed to offend people. That is not what I'm saying in any way, shape or form, okay? What I am saying is that if you feel comfortable and confident enough to do this, you might be able to identify a subject within your niche or related to your life that is slightly controversial that you know is going to get a bit of traction, get a bit of discussion in the comments section. You might be able to find a piece of content like that that you can share on your channel. The perfect example here comes from my niche. My most successful content on my TikTok page is content where I talk about money. Talking about money is a controversial thing to do for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but talking about money is a controversial thing to do, especially when you're from like specific races and demographics. There's a whole other conversation that we're not gonna dive into. Regardless, talking about money can be controversial for some. So when I've uploaded content where I talk about how much YouTube has paid me or my income streams, right? It always outperforms all of my other content because people see it, they share it, they comment under it, it gets a lot of engagement, it gets a lot of traction. So if there is something that you feel comfortable talking about that isn't offending people but might be ever so slightly controversial potentially explore creating content around it it is worth flagging that you will get some hate comments it's controversial right you will get people who will i don't know hate you for it for some reason so be aware of that and if you do not feel comfortable encouraging that type of commentary although i will flag to you that regardless of what you're talking about there is always a risk of getting a hate comment but if you do not want to encourage more hate comments then i would not recommend that you follow that hack my next hack is to create a few short videos. Notice I said a few. Please do not get carried away with this hack and start changing your TikTok strategy so that you are only uploading videos that are super short. Please do not do that. It is important to have a mixture of content length on your TikTok channel, right? Longer videos are more engaging, short videos are aren't very engaging, but might help you reach more people. So it is always important to make sure that you have the balance. Now, in order for me to explain why this hack works, I want to draw your attention to a bunch of posts that were previously circling TikTok and at one point also Instagram Reels, right? You might remember that there was a trend going on where people would say, oh my God, I just realized that TikTok's algorithm are pushing seven second videos. Or they would say, oh my God, my face when I realized that TikTok's algorithm are pushing five second videos. I haven't seen anything less than that yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming. The reason why people are saying that TikTok's algorithm are pushing seven second or five second videos is not purely because TikTok's algorithm has decided that actually five and seven second videos are are the ultimate form of content and they should be shared to as many people as possible. That's not what's happening. The reason why those videos can sometimes do well is because when a video is short, you increase the chances of someone watching the video the whole way through because there's not much of it and also the chances of someone re-watching it too because it was so short. The more you can get someone to watch your entire video, it's called like your view through rate, it's the percentage of your video that people watch through completion, right? The more you can get people to watch your entire 
entire video the whole way through and the more you can get people to re-watch your video the higher it's going to rank on TikTok's algorithm because those are two incredibly strong signals that your video content is good okay they are strong signals that your content is good and therefore TikTok is going to pick up on that and be like cool let's push it out to more people so that is why people go around saying the five second and seven second rule whatever it, I don't really think the exact length is what matters the tactic is to upload something that is short snappy and that what people want to watch the whole way through and re-watch multiple times too next hack develop a narrative this one's this one's good if you do this right it takes a bit of practice this is like an absolute game changer and do you know why because it is such a transferable skill if you get good at creating a narrative through your content you can quite literally succeed on like any social media platform genuinely anyway i always have to throw in something dramatic right but it's true in relation to tiktok what i'm referring to is ensuring that your content has a start a middle and an end now i get that when you're doing the previous hack where you're doing really short videos that might be quite tricky but i would encourage you to try and ensure that there is a narrative in all of your content regardless of how short it is but especially if it's long <laughs> Okay, here's why. When you develop a strong narrative, people want to watch your entire video. When you have a strong hook, a strong start to your video, which is telling people what's gonna be happening for the rest of the video or giving people a reason to continue watching your content, you have a strong middle which retains people's attention and then you have an end that people are looking forward to seeing, right? That is when you're gonna get people to watch your entire video and really engage with it. And that is usually when you're going to see a lot of content blow up. Let me give you the perfect example of when this works i saw a tiktok the other day which said watch my dog grow up right so immediately i was hooked because this the start of it was like oh my god i'm going to get to watch a dog go from a puppy to a medium-sized dog and for some reason that was enough of a hook for me to be like you have my full undivided attention right so that was the start the middle is watching the puppy play and grow up into a full-blown adult-sized dog right and in the end is the dog as an adult <laughs> If you don't like dogs, you're going to be like, that's not a strong narrative, but it is. It's a strong narrative. People want to watch that video the whole way through. It, they, it has a start, a middle and an end. People want to watch that and continue watching it. Or another example, watch my body transform. So it's when people show a transformation of their, their diet or their fitness journey, right? You immediately know what the video is about and you want to get to the end because it has such a strong narrative. So always ensure that the content that you are sharing on any platform, but in relation to TikTok, has a strong narrative. Next hack, rinse and repeat. Now this can be done to a wild extent on TikTok. What I'm basically referring to is repurposing your content, but unlike other platforms like YouTube or Instagram, where you do need to make sure you're recreating your content, even if it's about a similar subject, you're putting a new spin to it. On TikTok, you don't even really need to do that. It's actually a bit wild. I can't tell you how many creators I have seen who will post the exact same video. So maybe they're doing like a specific dance trend, right? I will see them do the same dance trend in the same room with a different outfit like eight times. I will see it all the time and every single time it will blow up. They will continuously get a huge amount of views and they will continuously get a huge amount of followers as a result. Because they did it the first time, they realized it worked, they realized they could absolutely kill that routine. So they led into it and they continued to reproduce that piece of content. I can even take it to the extent where some people won't even recreate it, they will just repost an existing TikTok. People will sometimes repost their most popular TikToks and Surprise, surprise, because it was successful the first time, it's often successful the second time too. So do not tell yourself that firstly, you cannot rinse and repeat your content because oh my God, can you? You really, really can. And secondly, do not tell yourself that in order for you to do that, you need to recreate the entire piece of content. You don't. You can actually talk about the same thing in a similar way, just in a different location, or you could quite literally just repost your most successful content. Aside from a few snarky comments that you might get here and there, someone saying, oh, I've seen you do this dance 10 times whatever apart from the odd comment like that you will notice that most people either won't notice or won't care and as a result of you repurposing content which you know has performed well in the past and will therefore probably perform well again in the future you will reach more people and that is what's going to help you grow so repurpose guys there's absolutely no crime associated with it i promise you will not get arrested repurpose that content okay final final hack is to not overthink it this is something that i have to remind myself 
every single day on TikTok. I actually think it's probably the biggest thing that is holding me back from seeing more growth on that platform. I'd like to blame it on the fact that I'm like a millennial and I grew up with Instagram and YouTube and those platforms are so heavily focused on having highly curated, well-produced content. And when you compare that to TikTok, which is a platform that actually favors more rough content, it actually can be a bit challenging to unlearn some of those habits of always ensuring that your content is really polished right but the hack here is that if you do unlearn those habits and you lean into the roughness of tiktok right and the rawness of it not only will you have more fun on the platform but you'll also be able to release a lot more content because you will not spend hours trimming every single clip to make sure that it's absolutely spotless but also you're probably going to see better results because people appreciate the rawness of the content on TikTok. People wanna feel like they have just been teleported into your bedroom whilst you're in bed watching a movie, eating popcorn with a face mask on. They want to see you like that. Like that's what they want. They wanna feel like they know you really well, right? They wanna feel like they're there with you. So that's why my final hack is to lean into that rough around the edges, raw style of content. Trust me, people will love it and you'll have a lot more fun. That is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Can you please let me know if you enjoyed it and if you want more content related to TikTok TikTok in the comments. That's how I know that you like my content. <laughs> otherwise I have no idea. If you feel like hanging around for a little bit longer, I recommend watching this video. It is all about whether you should be focusing your time on TikTok or whether you should be focusing your time on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching as always. I will see you in my next video.